Run on Less Electric Depot, an event by the North American Council for Freight Efficiency. All of the participants have been sharing data from their electric trucking operations, and now we have numbers to look at. In this video, I'm gonna share my analysis from the first five days of operations. I've broken down my observations into four different categories, batteries, charging, range, and efficiency. And those numbers kind of surprised me for the Tesla Semi. They've been making some big claims and the numbers were a little bit surprising. I'll save the best for last. I'm also going to limit this discussion to the battery electric class eight semi trucks that were being operated. Those include the Tesla Semi run by PepsiCo, the Freightliner E Cascada, which is run by a couple of different operations, and the Volvo VNR electric trucks run by a company called Performance Team. There's also the Nikola Trey Bev run by one of the participants, but there's very limited data from that truck. I'm not sure if it's a technical issue or something to do with data sharing agreements. There are also some medium and light duty trucks involved in this event. I don't plan to include those in this video, but if I get enough likes for this one, maybe they'll twist my arm and I'll go ahead and do a video on that one as well. Before we get into this though, I wanna caution you not to jump to conclusions. All of these companies haul different loads, running different routes, some more hilly than others, and varying levels of speeds and traffic conditions. It's kind of an apples and avocados comparison. They're both fruit, but you really can't compare the two. If you're familiar with electric vehicles or own one, there's a rule of thumb that tells you only to charge up to 80% on a daily basis. For the occasional road trip, you can go over that, and it's also best to use kind of the middle 60% of the battery. Try not to go below 20%. Experts say this avoids stressing the battery over its lifetime. By the way, there are lots of manufacturer recommendation for combustion engines too. Much to my surprise, these electric trucks don't seem to give a crap about 80%. All three semis were regularly being charged up to 100%. And in the case of the Tesla, they were regularly being run down to single digit state of charge. They had no fear whatsoever. I thought they might be using lithium iron phosphate batteries, but that doesn't appear to be the case, not at least in all of them. LFP batteries are gaining popularity for affordable EVs and commercial applications in North America. They are hugely popular in China, and they're more robust batteries that don't have that 80% recommendation. You can take them up to 100%. However, Tesla is confirmed to be using their own nickel cobalt rich batteries. Freightliner confirmed they are also using NMC batteries. I could not confirm the chemistry of the Volvo trucks, the batteries that they're using. Another possibility for them going up to 100% is they could have a better battery thermal management system. Being so big, they could have engineered better cooling for the batteries, allowing them to work harder than in a smaller electric car. Let's look at what the data tells us about how these trucks charge. And I'll remind you that there are big differences in the charging infrastructure across all the participants. The battery charge percent line tells us when a truck is being charged. The x-axis is always the same. It's a 24 hour day. The steeper vertical, the slope, the faster the truck is being recharged. You wanna go fast? The Tesla Semi recharges fast. We knew it had the most powerful equipment, Tesla uses a proprietary megawatt plug of their own design. They are rated at an output of 750 kilowatts. I looked at the example starting at the low state of charge and seeing how long it takes to get to 80%. Above 80%, the Tesla Semi, like most EV cars, starts to back off to avoid stressing the battery. So you get a rounding off at the top of the slope. The Tesla Semi regularly charges at a rate of about 650 kilowatts. It's interesting to note the time at which these trucks recharge. They run an early morning route in the middle of the night, really, and then they come back and charge in the afternoon. Electricity is most expensive in the afternoon because businesses are open and people are running air conditioning in the heat of the day. But remember, Pepsi has a Tesla mega pack on site so they can draw from that battery energy storage system in the afternoon, then recharge it overnight when rates are cheaper. 
This helps to spread out demand from the grid also. On the opposite end of charging is U.S. Foods. They have an interesting situation, though. They got their trucks early. They did plan, but they didn't get their equipment and infrastructure in place. They're using lower-powered, temporary charging equipment for now. You can see how flat the slope is compared to the Tesla. For the time they plug in until 9 p.m., they only charge at about 10 kilowatts. That's like level two charging speed. And why does the slope get steeper? That happens at 9 p.m., so their electrical rate must get cheaper after 9, so they program their charging equipment to go faster. But still, it only gets to about 25 to 40 kilowatts from the data samples that I looked at. Schneider Trucking, they operate Freightliner E-Cascada trucks too, but they have more powerful charging equipment installed. The chart shows them charging at between 100 and 150 kilowatts with a bit of rounding off at the top as it gets to 80% state of charge. Performance team operates Volvo VNR trucks. Their equipment is rated up to 180 kilowatts, but from the chart, they charge better than 200 kilowatts for a short period of time. Their charging doesn't slow down either. It doesn't taper off after 80% state of charge. They just keep going. In this event, the award for the hardest working truck goes to the Tesla Semi. On average, the three semis are being run over 500 miles a day. That's longer than the stated range, so they are being recharged at various times throughout the day. Truck drivers are limited in the number of hours they can drive without time off. Given the range and how fast these trucks recharge, human beings are actually the limiting factor right now. That's why there's interest in making long-haul over-the-road trucks autonomous, but that technology is proving difficult. Tesla Truck Semi number 3 was run 800 miles on back-to-back -back days. If you had enough mega charger infrastructure, you could absolutely use a Tesla Semi as a long-haul truck. And that's what Tesla has proposed with a network of mega chargers from its plant in Fremont, past the Austin location, and all the way to the Mexico border. By comparison, Freightliners and Volvos only average about 200 miles of daily use, just shy of their advertised range. I looked at the battery discharge curve versus miles driven. So if a Tesla Semi went from 98% state of charge down to 20% and drove 334 miles, if we assume a constant rate taking the battery all the way down to zero, that works out to 430 miles. That's less than the stated 500 miles of range. But again, let's not jump to conclusions. Based on the numbers, we know that the Teslas are running the majority of their miles at highway speeds, greater than 50 miles per hour. We've seen pictures of their routes, and it can get very hilly. Also, they're hauling liquids, so it's likely their loads are maxed out to the gross vehicle weight. Doing this estimation across all their trucks running over this five-day period, I get an estimated real-world driving range of 450 miles. Now, some of you are going to hate that number and, I don't know, hate me. I'm just doing the math. Me? I'm fine with it. I assumed when Tesla came out and said this truck can do 500 miles, I assumed that was on a flat road under a light load. Load up the trucks and drive them up some hills, and if they can get 450 miles of range, I think that's actually impressive. That's not terrible degradation. However, most people like to pump up Tesla, and I've seen headlines suggesting that the Tesla Semi is way better than advertised. Two of my previous videos actually suggested the same thing, that they're better than advertised. But looking at this new data, it makes me think that the numbers you see on the Tesla website, that's about how good they are on average across a variety of conditions. Now, I applied the same logic to the Freightliners and came up with a range estimate that is a little better than advertised. I'll say it again, apples and avocados. We don't have enough details for how their loads and terrains compare to the Pepsi. At this point, I want to take the analysis much deeper. But to do so, I need to know each truck's usable battery capacity. Now, Freightliner advertises a usable battery capacity of 438 kilowatt hours, so that's good. Volvo, on the other hand, they advertise a total battery capacity of 565 kilowatt hours. 
Now, based on other EVs, usable battery is about 94% of the total battery capacity. That number is gonna vary, but it's the best we have right now. So I'm going to estimate that the Volvo has a usable battery capacity of 530 kilowatt hours. Now the big question, what do we do with the Tesla Semi? They are famous for keeping things secret, right? Based on their comments and other investigations and news reports, the Semi is estimated to have a battery between 850 and 900 kilowatt hours. So that would be probably the total battery capacity, not a usable battery capacity. For the sake of this analysis, I'm going to assume that the usable battery capacity of the Tesla Semi is 850 kilowatt hours. We don't know the number for sure, but that's what I'm going with. Caution, for the efficiency number, I think things are gonna get a little more contentious. In an earlier video, a representative from PepsiCo said something that really shocked me. They said they are consistently able to keep energy utilization below or better than 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. That's more impressive than Tesla's claim of less than two kilowatt hours per mile. If so, that would be game-changing efficiency. So using battery state of charge from the start of a driving run until the end, we have a percent of battery used times the assumed usable battery size divided by the miles driven over that segment, averaged over multiple runs, all three trucks during a five day period, I get an average of less than two, but not really 1.7, not even close. They definitely are some trucks that achieve or beat that number on parts of their routes, but not consistently over the three semis that are being measured, not by my calculations. A good example of this is Tesla semi number one, running on September 14th. So let's look at that data. During the first leg of the run, it has terrible efficiency. My guess is that it was fully loaded, running uphill, and just carrying a whole bunch of Mountain Dew. On the return trip, it's lighter because it unloaded those heavy liquids, and now it's going back downhill and achieving some awesome efficiency. That's why I averaged all the numbers over multiple trucks, runs, and days. The Freightliner efficiency numbers, by my calculations and estimates and assumptions, and unequal operating conditions, well, they're better efficiency, just slightly better. I use those numbers from Schneider and OK Produce since they ran the most miles with those trucks. But remember, those trucks are lighter than the Tesla Semi. We assume so because they've got half the battery capacity. The Volvo efficiency numbers were not as good, but again, let's not jump to conclusions. The telemetry data includes a regen as a bar graph. Now, they don't give the numbers, but you know, I put a ruler up to my monitor to try to estimate the numbers. In summary, Tesla Semi runs a lot of long highway miles with the regen that comes from hilly terrain. Freightliner trucks running out of OK Produce in Fresno ran mostly highway miles above 50 miles per hour, but they did not encounter as many hills, so much less regen. Schneider Freightliner trucks operate more local routes. They spend less time at highway speeds and more time below 50 miles per hour. Their regen, I assume, comes from stop and go conditions. And the Volvos, they didn't report any regen. I assume this was a technical difficulty with the telemetry. Those trucks do offer regenerative braking. A high level summary, apples, avocados. Let's not jump to conclusions based on this limited set of data but it's the best look that we have. The Tesla definitely is as good as advertised, but given the data, I cannot say that it is somehow vastly better than advertised. There were some comments made prior to this data being released that might've suggested its efficiency and range were somehow better than advertised, but I would just say it's as good as advertised for those measures, but in terms of charging, that thing charges really fast. It racks up miles day after day. And about the only thing stopping it from being a long haul over the road truck is a network of megawatt chargers and Tesla has plans for that. The Freightliner had surprisingly good numbers for efficiency and range, 
Maybe that's why it's such a popular truck and used by multiple carriers. And the Volvo VNR, it was a limited sample size, but that truck gets the job done. It racks up miles and charges faster than the Freightliner, but its range and efficiency numbers were only marginally close to what was advertised, so a little bit disappointing. All in all, these Class 8 trucks, I was surprised that they charged them to 100% on a daily basis. I was not expecting that. Hopefully, you also learned some things about the Class 8 battery electric trucks on the road, too. If so, consider giving this channel a subscription and a like. Thanks for watching, and keep on trucking.